Christians are allowed by God to drink alcohol, but we are forbidden to get drunk. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5:18. This is a command from the Spirit-inspired Apostle. And Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 22 says, Woe unto them, that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. One of the ways, used by the Satan to attack the Christian is, by tackling those areas of your weakness. However, we should also understand that, Satan does not know all things. Satan is not present everywhere. Neither, is she, the most powerful. The only most powerful possible being, is the God Almighty. It's not necessarily the devil that attacks Christians, but it may be his interns. Maybe we're not important enough, to get the attention of Satan. Satan is not present everywhere. He's not omnipresent. He can only be in one place at one time, but he has a lot of interns, to do his work for him. Satan knows our weak points. He knows where we sin easily. He knows, if we are tempted to pride. He knows, if we are tempted to anger. He knows, if we are tempted to be slothful, and he uses those weaknesses to deal with us. Stay tuned. I do not know what pushes me into what I am doing these days. Why are you saying that? I am saying that because of the way, and the manner that I have been drinking. Could you believe that? I can sit here and take up to 10 bottles of beer, and I will be still longing for more. Tell me something, that is too much for you. Not even that, it has pushed me into betting. If I do not bet in a day, I will not be comfortable, whether good, or bad. And many others, ungodly activities. I hardly go to church, I hardly do those things that God says we should do. I mean, I am not going the right way. When was the last time, you take your time and worship God? I cannot even remember. What of prayers? I must be honest with you. It has been long. Can that affect the way that I am living? Of course, Satan has started work in your life, seriously. You have to wake from your slumber before it is too late. You have said something that struck my mind. And what is that? Satan has started work in my life, seriously. That I have to wake from my slumber before it is too late. Then are you going to wake from your slumber? Yes, I will. I think from what you are telling me, it is the earlier, the better for you. 1 Peter 5, verses 8 to 9 says, Be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. The devil knows that the first area he should tackle is to push you into drinking. He is very much aware that, by doing this, he will be able to kill your spiritual life quickly. Your praying appetite will be down because of drinking. All the money that you make will be channeled into drinking. He also pushed you into betting so that you not have business doing with God. Did God say that it is a sin for a man to drink? No, God never said so. Listen to what the Bible says concerning drinking alcohol. Christians are allowed by God to drink alcohol, but we are forbidden to get drunk. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 Also, see Isaiah 5.22 This is a command from the Spirit-inspired Apostle. Do you have food in the house? I am hungry. I want to eat. Find food for me. Did you keep money in the house before you left for your drinking? Just look at how you embarrass yourself. You have not paid your children's fees, yet, the little money, that we will have used for upkeeping, is being used by you for drinking. See what you have turned yourself into. And I am very sure, you did not go there alone. It is either you went there with your girlfriend, or were your drinking partner. Woman, stop challenging my authority, go find food for me to eat. I am very hungry. Listen to your husband. Go and find me food to eat, 
before I start vomiting here. Boga, I said there is no food in the house. When God said that we should drink, but not drunk, you take God for granted. Now, who is facing the punishment now? Isaiah 5:21-23 says, Doom to you, who think you're so smart, who hold such a high opinion of yourselves. All you're good at, is drinking champion boozers, who collect trophies from drinking bouts. And then line your pockets with bribes from the guilty, while you violate the rights of the innocent. <coughs> In Proverbs 20, 1, it says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. In Ephesians 5.18, it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. How will you have time for your family, when you're filled with wine, and not spirit? Before God warns us, to stay away from too much drinking, He knows the implications, and the negative effect. Both financially, and healthy-wise. Whether we like it, or not. It must finally come back to what God said. Satan, as we all know, is a master planer, but God is there to help those who are looking for help. Just like any other predator would do, Satan spends his time targeting the young, the sick, and the lame, who are existing in a weakened condition in their faith, which happens to every believer at some point. That is why you must be strong in the Lord, but if you are struggling, and losing the fight of faith, remember that, dividing line between victory and defeat is in how you battle. You can be strong in the Lord, even when you feel weak. The enemy said to the Lord, he is roaming to and fro around the earth, seeking people to devour. Job 1, 7, and 1 Peter 5, 8. He has never made it a secret, that he seeks to destroy you. How does he do that? By getting you to destroy yourself. Even people with the strongest faith experience seasons of struggle, so there should be never a point in time, when you can let down your guard. The Lord stands guard with you. Psalm 139, verse 5, but you must always. Guard your eyes, Psalm 101, 3. Guard your heart, Psalm 19, 14. Guard your anointing. Guard your marriage. Guard your reputation. 1 Thessalonians 5.22. Guard your home. Guard your children. Guard your mouth. Psalm 141, 3. And also, guard your spirit. Satan is actively searching for the weak points, in your faith, because, he wants to exploit them. God is actively searching for the weak points, in your faith, because, he wants to expose them. God has strategies for your victory, but you must learn how to understand them, and use them. Keep this in mind, a predator can try and take down its prey, but if the prey fights back hard enough, the predator will eventually go find an easier target. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Stay tuned. Honey, what time are we praying tonight? 12 midnight. Will you be able to stay awake, till then? Yes I will. This one that you are yawning, I hope you will not sleep off. It will be too bad, if we do not pray tonight. I will not be happy. I think I should set alarm on my phone. So that I will be awake by 12 midnight, and pray. Barman, I need more beer. Bring more. Cop. 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 Calculate how much is your money. Sir, your money is ten dollars. I will pay. Bring more bottles. Give him more bottle. He is my friend. Give him more. He is in my custody. The devil will pay for him. We want him to drink. Until he is drunk. Jesus Christ. So that was a dream. I drink to the point of seeing myself, drinking in the dream. 
and I have missed my midnight prayers. Was that not what I told you? That you should stop drinking. The devil has used drinking to kill your spiritual life. See your life. It has come to point of you, drinking in the dream. You drink both spiritually and physically. The devil has noticed and observed that you like drinking. He decided to use that your weakness to destroy your relationship with God. Let me change my pattern. Will I be able to stop drinking so that I can do only betting? I will use this $10 that I removed from my wife hand back to bet. Then, if I bet this $10, I will win $100 and I will return my wife's money back to her hand back, then take the rest. I must bet. Let me be fast, so rad I can be there before the game starts. Even though that, I have observed the, my spiritual life has slowed down, I have my plans to stop drinking, stop betting, and also stop womanizing. These are what the Lord hate. These things has killed me spiritually, it has killed me physically. Oh, my God, help me. If I bet four like ten times, then I will stop finally. <coughs> yes. Christians are allowed by God to drink alcohol, but we are forbidden to get drunk. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. If a science 518. This is a command from the Spirit-inspired Apostle. And Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 22 says, Woe unto them, that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. I promise myself that, I will break all the wine bottles, that I have in my wine bar, and trash them at waste bin. Look at how I embarrassed myself, in front of my wife. My wife rejected my kiss, because of my smelling mouth. My children, are no more close to me. <coughs> Please bet my game, before the game start. How much bet do you want to place? Just, ten dollars. This game is sure winning. Bet it fast, so that I can return my wife's money, before she returns from work. A lot of young men are pushed into betting, by Satan. Satan will make sure that, you keep on playing even when you are losing. He makes you to begin to count chicken that have not been hatched. 1 Timothy 6, 9-10 says, those who want to get rich fall into a temptation, and a trap, and into many foolish, and harmful desires, that plunge people into ruin, and destruction. Stay tuned. Sorry sir, your game has not played. You have lost the game. My wife's money has gone. Game that I took my time to select. It can never be. Go and check again. I am a game master. I have been in this system for a long time. So, I know how to select games. But, how will I do, with my wife's ten dollars? That was the last money in the house. What will my children eat today? Oh, I'm finished. Sir, this thing is, the more you lose, the more you play. May God forgive you. Sir, do not be angry with me. I only book games for customers, but I do not decide winning for customer. My wife will break my head today. See what Satan has pushed me into. I drink, I bet, and I womanize. I am useless. In fact, I am the most stupid man in the world. How will I get myself out of this mess? A family man for that matter. God forgive me, touch my wife's heart to understand with me. Then, how do we overcome these weaknesses? Number 1. Walking in faith to victory. As a person of faith, you must be strong in the Lord, by being rooted in His Word. Communicate with Him in prayer. Keep your spirit connected to God, through your ministry of worship. Don't allow the enemy to exploit, your areas of weakness, instead, let God reveal those weaknesses to you, so He can strengthen them. The second one is fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Fear is a natural, 
human response, but you serve a supernatural God. Fear is a spirit, the Bible is clear on this, the spiritually opposing force to fear is threefold. Spiritual power, God's supernatural love, and the ability to think clearly. Even if, there is something to be afraid of, in the natural like, a diagnosis, or a terrible situation, there is a peace that goes beyond what you understand, in the natural. Philippians 4, 7, get victory over vain imaginings, and evil forebodings from the enemy. They are demonic, and not of God. Remember, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears is not perfect in love. 1 John 4:18. That perfect love is Jesus, and he has overcome the world, and its fears. John 16:33. The third one is anger. Anger makes a place for the devil. Paul wrote, Ephesians 4:26-27. It's okay to be angry, but there comes a point where that anger becomes sinful. When you hold on, and refuse to let go, when it's all you can think about, when your anger affects everything in your life. You may be justified in your anger, you may be on the right side of your anger, you may be the true victim, with every right to be angry, but if you want to be strong in the Lord, move ahead. Others are, forgiveness, immaturity, and hurt. Finally, be strong in the Lord, by strengthening your spirit. Mayth good Lord help us, as we put his word in the practical form, in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching this video.